Good morning. Thank you uh, for inviting me, first off. Uh, I made this joke last night that I'm not part of this. And by that I mean that I'm not really uh, much of a maker. I'm not much of a healthcare professional. I'm not a healthcare professional. Uh, most engineers that I work with would say I'm not much of an engineer. But as Joyce said, I filled out the paperwork, so I, I get to be the foundation. And it's something I get to fake my way along pretty frequently. And, uh, you know, there's the fake it till you make it school of thought. And sometimes we do what we have to do. Uh, yesterday, the comment uh, from the make nurse was, you know, we find lean and tough hospitals are the, are the hotbed of this maker community. And I simply, I, I tweeted back the comment, necessity is the mother of invention, right? We do what we have to do. And to me, uh, this is what I had to do. And the foundation is where I thought I could help out. It's where I could start pulling these things together. So we'll look at the beginning of Night Scout. Uh, obviously, everybody's got a story about why they care. And so I get to tell you mine. And we'll talk about the foundation and, and what we exist for and Ken and I talked for a long time this morning about why, why do you have this thing? And it's an interesting dilemma to try and wrap a business model around something that people do out of love and people do out of passion and what they do out of necessity. And sometimes they don't always mix and they don't always fit well together. So it's been an interesting struggle, but we'll talk about it and uh, maybe you guys can learn the lessons that I'm learning the hard way. So, February 2011, it snowed in Dallas. A lot of snow. This is, uh, this is Jerry World. And, and the only reason I remember this is because I spent the Super Bowl in the hospital. I, had a, I have a beautiful 12-year-old daughter who is type 1 now for four and a half years. And we had taken her into the usual winter cold, strep, malaise, what have you. And... I had just recognized enough of the symptoms that I said, I know you will think I'm crazy, but would you run a glucose test? And my pediatrician kind of gave me the, it's your money, look. <laughs> and said, fine, go, you know, go pee in the cup. And, and we did this, and he's running through the full strep rundown. His nurse walks back in, and, and I remember, She just hands him the, the scrap of paper, and he, and he has that look, and his head goes down, and you can see he's collecting, you know, how do I deliver this? And, and I knew. And he said, okay, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to get in the car, you're going to go home, you're going to pack a bag, you're going to take a shower because you're not coming home for a couple of days, and, and you're headed downtown to the hospital. And, I, and my comment was, you know there's six inches of snow outside, right? And he says, you're going now. And it changes your life. It, and um, It's a train wreck. And you spend three days with a kid, and they say, here's this insulin. If you give them too much, it'll kill them. If you don't give them enough, it'll kill them. You're not going to sleep for the next God knows how long. And in six months when we think you're competent, we'll give you this pager from the 80s that maybe will help you. Oh, it's going to go to sleep on me. This is going to be fun. That uh, maybe will help you. I can come help if you want. <laughs> Let's see if I can figure it out. I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll quit talking so much. And maybe this pager will help you. Maybe it won't. But it will do parts of this. And then we'll give you another toy that does other parts of this. And at some point in the future, you know, it'll be cured. Because that's the line they tell you. This will be cured. Five years, right, Ken? It's always yeah, five, five years, years away. Five, five years. This won't be a problem. And it's 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 maddening and it's frustrating. And you know, I, I want you to know we obviously survived. Um, you know, we went to Europe this summer. My kid goes to camp. We went to band camp. We do all these great things. And in part, it's because of Night Scout. To be perfectly honest, the uh, last year, my daughter joined the middle school band and went to Six Flags. And it was the first field trip in four years that I haven't been on, or my wife hasn't been on. And it was like 
the best day in years because we both sat at home and watched college football and did nothing. And we did the watch check. We occasionally texted back and forth. But it was an era of freedom that heretofore was unknown. And it really boiled down to this project that started, you know, with one dad saying, why does this stuff suck? And that's what it really is. I, I'm sorry, you know, Nate, uh, you know, any, any medical manufacturer out there, I'm sorry, your stuff sucks. It's, it's an embarrassing state. It's the reason for years I was not involved with the type 1 online community, because I was just mad. I was just constantly... I've got thousands of dollars worth of electronics that you're charging me for. I've got another thousands of dollars, and none of it talks to any of it, and I'm faxing in logs. You know, I, I was on a phone call one day with um, I am Spartacus tweet, uh, and we were talking, and he was recording a, a, a webcast, and my fax machine went off. And he says, what the hell is that? And I said, that's the fax machine. Why do you have a fax machine? I said, because I still have doctors. They're the only ones who want it. And it's just this technology is so madly frustrating. And John Costick and Lane Desbro, who are, you will hear, is basically the fathers of Night Scout, looked at this and said, there's got to be a better way. So we can see these are actually John's notes from the early beginning, using essentially the Windows feed and you know, using the data, that the, the resources that were published. He said, what if I just point a webcam at my computer, and I leave that at the daycare facility. You know, for a four-year-old, that works. For a middle school or a band, not so much. But it was a start. And it was an interesting start because it took the data that heretofore had been locked into this little candy bar that we paid thousands of dollars for and made it accessible anywhere else. That's pretty great stuff. It's, it's a change. It's a sea change in how we, we go from there to then, you know, using a laptop and a USB, and we're uploading to Google Docs where I can watch it scroll by on my screen. And then we really start going into, and John, let's rephrase this, not we, I didn't do any of this. John gets into really debugging and understanding the stream of data coming out of this device. And how can I make sense of this stream of information, and what is this hexadecimal code mean, and how do I put it on the right device? And this picture, this is what got me. This is what got my wife yelling across the house, you need to come in here and look at this. Because John posted this picture, and it immediately, it, it, it exploded. The Type 1 community online, basically every single one of us said, have you seen what this guy's doing? Because every single one of us has a desperate need for it. And he took it from that place, shared with Lane, shared with other folks, put it on, and in no time, other people were taking his knowledge, taking his information, trying to figure out how to take this and make it broader, to the point where Jason Adams posted uh, essentially on Bounty Source or Elance, one of these, uh, hey, I need somebody to deploy code. And Rajat Gupta came back and said, this is too simple. And from then, it became something that anybody could do. Right? You've got someone, you've got an engineer uh, in India saying, this is so simple, I can't even, I can't charge you the minimal amount. Because as an engineer, it's a very straightforward thing. Then it became accessible. Right? We went from, you have to know how to code and deploy. There's, there's geek. There's coder, there's development, and then it came down a level, Rajat, I can help you set this up, I can put this out for you. And then it became this, and this is this, uh, this month's, this week's version of how do you get your CGM in the cloud? Because what started with basically a bespoke solution for John and Evan and Lane and his son is now a solution that's available for almost anybody, for almost any combination of devices, and there is support, peer-to-peer -peer support by this insane group of about 20 individuals around the world. And any hour, anywhere in the world, you can post your question to the CGM in the Cloud group, or to the Night Scout Hungary group with 800 people in it, or the Night Scout, Ital Night Scout Italia group, 
and you'll find someone ready to help you out. And it's all for free, it's not for profit, and it's, it's a dizzying array of options. And it's from every manufacturer, it's every platform, it's every telco service. We've taken a, a, a one-off, and there's, I think the last estimate we have is somewhere between four and 6,000 people using this Night Scout project actively on a daily basis. Um, and it's a pretty broad range because it's code. It, it wants to be free and what people do with it to a certain extent, we don't always know. So one of the things that comes up then when you start seeing these solutions um, is, well, oh, and, and I show this because this is, this was my rig. Um, this is my maker effort. This was my Instructables. Uh, I said last night that I, I, I like Instructables. I, I work for Autodesk, we are. There's my disclosure, Joyce. We're gonna talk about Instructables. I work for the company that manages Instructables. Um, this is my Night Scout rig. And it's funny because you saw the, the 3D printed version that Joyce sewed. Uh, my version is seventh grader on the bus capable. And it's bomb proof. It, it really was. It's a, it's a tackle box with foam and cords. And um, in the 14 months that we used this, I never lost a cable because it was built to last. Um, it was also about a pound and a half. And it was, you know, my daughter carried a purse bigger than my briefcase, but it worked. Now, somewhere in the middle of that, the question kept coming up, when are we going to get sued? And it wasn't a real... It was, it was funny, but it wasn't funny. Because at some point you realize you're playing with medical devices. And this is probably the biggest uh, concern I have for the idea of maker health is at some point, what's gonna happen? What's the chilling effect going to be when something goes south for one of these? And it is a very scary proposition. And as we went through the code, we had sort of an artificial level of entry Right? When you first built Night Scout, you had to know how to code. You had to have a certain level of skill set that um, sort of by association, most of the people were college educated, some college work. There was a level of education involved that sort of um, you knew what you were getting into. And then as we democratized the solution, and we moved from the guys who were, and I'm looking at from here, you know, the guys who were way over here on the bell curve, as we moved to the mean, we have people who have set this up, and they, they've done a great job of following all the steps and all the videos, but they have no idea what they've done. And that's, it's frightening. And my name was on the videos, it was my YouTube account when we started posting these things, and I said, um, again, when are we going to get sued? And everybody go, wow, that's a really good concern. Have you seen what I coded this week? <laughs> I was like, no, really. We're going to. And it was, it was, if it's not an individual person where something, somebody has a, an adverse effect, it was Dexcom or JDRF or Medtronic or Pebble. You know, any number of people at any time, we always kind of like, When's the shoe going to drop? And so, so uh, just about a year ago, I, I finally emailed out to a, a group of seven other members of the CGM and Cloud group, and I said, I'm starting the Night Scout Foundation. Here are the things we're going to do. If you want in, send me your email. Uh, send me your physical address so I can put you on the state paperwork. If you don't want in, I understand. Thank you for everything you've done. And every single one of them was crazy enough to sign up. So we started this board, and really, this is all we're about. This is, this is what we exist to do is whatever's next. And really, I came up with three things. When we talk about the foundation, the three things were, one, give us a level of protection. Just put some basic level of corporate shell so that when we get sued, and I'm still waiting for it to happen, there's at least one wall between my home and whatever else happens out there. The second was to give us the power of this community and do something with it. At the time, I think, Wes, we had seven or 8,000, maybe 9,000 people on Facebook October last year. Yes, yes. So we had eight or 9,000 people. That's a massive market in this community. It's, it's a huge 
uh, opportunity for purchase power, negotiation power, whatever, because let's be honest, the Dexcom, Microsoft, Mongo Lab, Pebble, they don't make deals with, as my catcher, seven dudes on the internet. That's not a legal entity, although it would be a great name. So if somebody files that this afternoon, you owe me. Seven dudes on the internet don't get business deals. A foundation, a nonprofit, a 501c3, they get donations. They get business deals. They get laptops that go to sleep. <laughs> and so we've really taken on these pieces and tried to uh, address these things and, and in ways we've been successful and in ways we haven't. Uh, on the technology, we have partnered with Microsoft. We've been able to put in place essentially uh, test databases, test hardware, we have full access to Azure. I'm so excited about this Bacori grant um, because it legitimizes the work the foundation is doing and it also allows us to go to Microsoft and use Microsoft Azure for research, which is basically a blank check with their systems. And it really means all the things that our community has done as individuals using all these thousands of Microsoft servers, we can now as a group put it together and just operate on a single piece. And, um, when you start thinking about that, right now it's 4,000 individual databases and 4,000 individual users and 4,000 individual setups and the opportunity exists to go to one database for 4,000 users. And if you guys have, you, know, you guys all know this, a big T1 CGM research project is 40 kids for 14 days. We generate that much data while I'm talking. The volume of data collected by Night Scout users is multiple orders of magnitude larger than any commercial project or any research project that's been done to date. And we can leverage that if we can figure out how to do it. We also exist to make this available to everyone. You know, the, the advocacy West drove in from uh, the north side of whatever's across the lake from Buffalo, uh, Vancouver, Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls on the Canadian side. Um, presentations at conferences like di you know, uh, Diabetes Tech, Children with Diabetes, Focus on Technology, uh, hopefully ADA, all these sorts of things. With a foundation, with a company behind it, you can do things like set up a booth and talk to all of these companies, all these researchers, all of these different groups meet with JDRF, FDA, uh, Health and Human Services. You know, those are connections that you don't make as seven dudes. You make those connections when you are and, and have some basic organizational tenant put together. And then fundraising. It's as simple as that. This costs money. And every day you see people in the CGM and the cloud group talk about where can I buy the things cheaper? Where can I get a CGM cheaper? If you looked at Joyce's map and you looked at the rest of the world, one of the most intriguing things to me is, yes, the U.S. is covered. But once you leave the U.S., it's a problem everywhere. It's not a need you know, that is just U.S.-based. It's not a need that's local. Healthcare is local, which means it's everywhere there are people with type 1. And every one of them has to figure out a way to get to this data and wants to know how do I keep an eye on myself or on my loved one, wherever I am? And that means that taking this message to Canada and to UK and to wherever else is next needs to happen and it means we need to have some funds behind it. So we did set up a 501c3, uh, went through all the fun parts of setting up an official charity and we're, we're working towards those things and making that, that advocacy happen and hopefully um, hopefully next year the, the, the plan and, and the goal right now is to start offering up scholarships this spring for Night Scout users and Night Scout students to go out and pursue STEM related degrees and, and do something better and, and make these products, to be honest, suck less. So we have a lot on our plate. What's next? Obviously the PCORI grant. Um, OpenAPS is uh, sort of the evolution of Night Scout. 
those people who are on that end of the bell curve, they don't, they don't move to the mean just because they got that part figured out, right? They, they take another step. And so what you're seeing right now is an open, uh, open source project that essentially drives pumps. And it's a in of, I think, 13, last time I checked, people building and running their own open source artificial pancreas and getting results that make me cry out of jealousy because they're doing it and, and they're, they're taking it to the next level. And then, of course, the Microsoft piece uh, in terms of Azure for research. It's a frustrating thing and, you know, Wes and Ken have both been kind enough to remind me that running a, found, a, a nonprofit may be about the most thankless job on the planet. Um, <laughs> You know, I, so I, there are days when I, I hate my job, but I'm compensated well, so I can live with it. Right? Nobody gets paid to run a nonprofit. Nobody gets paid to help out a nonprofit. You know, all the people involved are volunteers, and every single one of them is trying to answer this question or is trying to deal with this question. They're like, "Are you still angry?" And my answer is yes. You know, I, I, I wake up constantly mad about the state of the things that my kid has to go through. So. Whether or not it's approved, or whether or not it's paid for by my insurance company, it's a necessity. And I, and Wes, and Ken, and everybody else involved with these sorts of projects, we're going to do what's necessary. And we're going to take care of the people we love. So thank you guys very much. Uh, I'll let Wes come up and talk about this incredible community that is Night Scout, the incredible growth of social media and how it relates to this movement, and then we'll sit here and we'll talk about all the controversies with Nate in a little bit. Thank you.